Have you ever wanted or felt curious enough to try out Chili Day? Maybe you have and you told your friends or family members about it but instead got these reactions in response. Huh? You want to become a chili leader? It's not even a sport. Huh? Chili ding? Tak payahlah masuk, lompat sini, lompat situ. Nanti, if you masuk the hospital, who's going to pay the bill? Nak masuk chili ding? Eh, kau tak? Chili ding tu perempuan yang join. Lelaki macho main game, mana pun benda main chili ding. Welcome to Chili Ding 101, where we'll discuss the misconceptions on chili ding as well as some of the stereotypes and judgment it faces. To get a better understanding on how society views cheerleading, we asked the public for their thoughts and opinions on the matter. No. Yes. No. 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 Yeah. No. 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 Now let's begin by discussing the first misconception, shall we? Is cheerleading a sport? Based on the research we have done, cheerleading has as much of a right to being called a sport just like any other sport, such as badminton, basketball, or football. Why do we say this? That is because if we look at what defines a sport, it must be a physical activity and they must be contesting or competing against an opponent. A sport must also be governed by rules that explicitly define the time, space, purpose of the contest, and conditions under which a winner is declared. And we can assure you that cheerleading has all of that. Like all competitions, competitive cheerleading does have its rules and regulations they have to stand by. Other than that, from being thrown into the air to doing flips, cheerleading is definitely an activity physical enough to be called a sport. How about we get this from a coach's perspective? So, if you go by definition, a sport is an activity that requires physical exertion. Basically, if you're an individual or a team, you can compete for entertainment purposes and that actually fits perfectly for cheerleading. It's not just because of the definition, but in cheerleading, we actually do a lot of physical activities. We do strength conditioning, a lot of stamina training and specific strength training. Every other sport does the same thing. So I guess that fits the criteria of being a sport. Now moving on to the second misconception. Is cheerleading for boys? For this one, let's open up the history books for a little enlightenment. Cheerleading began during the late 18th century and actually started off as an all-male sport. Johnny Campbell was considered the first legitimate cheerleader and from there, organized cheer began. Now back to current times. We believe that most of these misconceptions come from teen chick flicks and rom-coms that usually depict cheerleaders in a certain way. And most of the time, boys aren't included or it isn't seen as something manly. However, there is no specific rule that says cheerleading is only for girls. In fact, 50% of the college cheerleaders in the US are male. Furthermore, we are pleased to say that even in Malaysia, there is an increasing rate of male participation in competitive cheerleading. Back to the coaches. In cheerleading, we have a role for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're tall or short, or it doesn't matter what size you are, whether you're, or, and it doesn't matter your gender and your race. We have a role for every single one. For example, in cheerleading, we do lift things. So a, a person carries another person. So if let's say you are small, maybe you can be the one that goes on top and the person carries you. And if you are stronger and bigger and more muscular, then you can be the one that's carrying. Same goes for gender. If you are a guy, if you are tall and you are muscular, you can be the one that is carrying someone. And if you are very, very small, you can be the one being lifted as well. So cheerleading is a sport for everybody. Last but not least, our third misconception. Is cheerleading safe? I'm sure like any other sport, even cheerleading can seem a bit scary and intimidating. However, just like the other sports, cheerleading is safe if you follow the precautions and practice in a way that isn't dangerous. In terms of statistics, the High School Sports Injury Surveillance System ranks cheerleading as number 17 out of 20 sports. In addition to that, a recent study conducted by lead researcher Don Comstock for the National Federation of High Schools shows that the overall cheerleading injury rates were lower than all other sports except for volleyball and swimming. Now, let's see what the experts say. Cheerleading is safe because we practice based on progression. So instead of just attempting to throw someone in the air, we start off from very, very low level stance. We start from maybe waist level first. So once waist level is safe and the basic is strong, then we can bring higher, maybe chest level. Then from chest level, we go to eye level, then go to extended arms level. So we practice progression. There we go. We've come to the end of our video. I hope we left you having a bit more information in your brain 
and most importantly, having a better mindset when it comes to cheerleading. Thank you.